Andy Fragan. Andy Fragan has been using WordPress since 1847. In that time, he has become a proficient hacker, contributor, plugin developer, and hobbyist of WordPress. His plugins in the plugin repository have over half a million downloads. Andy Fragan. Thank you so much, Dave. <laughs> so this is one of the reasons I have a job. And that I have, there is no shortage of work for me to do. People do silly things all the time. Some people do stupid things all the time. Uh, as I like to say, there's no end of stupid people. And because of that, a lot of what I do professionally and what I'm going to be telling you about um, as far as WordPress is how to protect people from themselves. The, uh, I, I don't get this. He's got kids all around. He's looking at them. It, it just doesn't make much sense. And yet we do it anyway. Right? You, you can't, you know, if you try to make things more perfect or idiot proof, there will be a more perfect idiot to figure a way around it. Um, there's truly almost nothing that is perfect, finished, or complete, especially when we're talking about software, right? Which brings us to what we're really talking about. Um, in this case, bringing WordPress core to PHP 5.6 and beyond. Currently, um, well, as of a couple of weeks ago or so when I printed this out, the uh, state of WordPress was on, it goes from 5.27, I believe, on up. I believe they test on 7.4, or at least the PHP nightlies. So you can be assured that at least core and trunk is, is running and, and won't air out on those. The proposal to move to 5.6 was made by um, Matt and State of the Word uh, this last year. And I, it was met with resounding applause. Uh, there's a lot of us that have thought that trying to maintain backwards compatibility with uh, PHP 5.2 kept us out of a lot of the nice shiny things that uh, later versions of PHP, even 5.3, had to offer. Uh, if you look at the graph, the, the areas where I've got highlighted there are 5.2 to 5.5, which will be obsolete, or which will be no longer allowable to install or update uh, to WordPress 5.2. Uh, in fact, officially, it's uh, 5.6.20 is what is your, what you can update to. The, if you look at the other others, the, 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 the big graph here, 32 percent, oh, I should probably point with something, right? I can't. Um, at 32 percent is 5.6. At 18 percent is, uh, what is it, uh, 7.0. Both of those are, are end of life. Still receiving security updates, but end of life. Um, I'm not sure where 7.1 is on the thing, but the current recommended version is 7.2. No, 7.3. 7.2 is still is, is, is not the currently, support, currently active version. And if you go to WordPress, their recommended uh, page says uh, uh, 7.3. If you go to the uh, Site Health plugin, uh, you'll get a little notice to say you should update if you are on running a version of PHP less than 7.3. What this means is about 20% of the current installs on WordPress are uh, going to be no longer able to update to the latest version of WordPress because they don't have a current version of PHP. The upside is that by the end of the year, the plan is to increase the PHP version minimum to 7.0, uh, which means Everybody in green needs to move farther into purple. And what are the benefits? Well, it's faster. 
it's more secure. You can write more efficient, more object-oriented, safer code. Um, you can create better code quality, and it's faster. You can improve your site speed just from moving from 5.2 or 5.3, any version below 5.6, uh, uh, from 5.6 to 7 to 7.1, two to three times the speed. That improves its efficiency. That decreases your server resources and generally makes you pay less money to your hosting company if you pay per resource. So why would you not? I attribute it to the West Wing. Decisions are made by those who show up. Uh, I'll give Aaron Sorkin credit for that because I remember from the West Wing, a great show. I made a conscious decision to attend a lot of the uh, core PHP Slack and the uh, core uh, development um, Slack meetings. Um, contributing to open source is about time. Um, DeVries, or the guy, the, the gentleman who runs a, a, the Drupal project, has a recent uh, post about this where really he, he talks about the biggest factor in open source contribution is time management. And do you have time to allow to do this? Um, so I made a, a conscious decision um, for some of the things that I wanted to help with uh, up, helping update core uh, to PHP 5.6 uh, and beyond. And so I made a conscious decision to attend all the, you know, attend as many Slack meetings as I can and, and be as active as I can, giving feedback and, and making patches and things like that. Um, Contributing to core is different. You, it's not like writing code for yourself where, oh, this is good, I've tested it, it works out the door. Not that it happens that quickly. But there's a lot of different personalities involved. There's a lot of different cultures and language barriers and code style that are different and that uh, need to be taken into account. The Sometimes you can put in feedback, put in patches, put in track tickets, and you get nothing. It's just crickets. No feedback, uh, no actual notification that something's happened. And it can be a little disappointing. And so it, as you participate, then you, you try to ping somebody to gauge interest or give them feedback or say, hey, you know, this really does help solve a problem. Um, and then there can be like a flurry of activity within, you know, 10, 12 hours. Uh, and then more crickets for the next 8, 12 months before something gets committed. A lot of the tickets and patches that we're, that we're going to be talking about were really ready to go for 5.0. But the core committers and the core, the, the, the core team, development team, made Gutenberg the priority for 5.0. So everything else got pushed back. It was a kind of chaotic time in, in contributing to Trunk because there were several different branches and it wasn't quite the usual method. So, I mean, we just kept, you know, some of us just kept writing tickets and patches and stuff for Trunk and just kind of waiting for, for 5.1 to drop so that we could start merging things in. Um, one of the things that, uh, that happened we, in a late, one of the big priorities in, uh, in the Serve Happy product, project was, this was the project that, that, we, that was codenamed Serve Happy to bring all the, uh, the code base safety measures, if you will, uh, to help, help users from hurting themselves. Right into core. It, it started out in 5.1 um, with the dashboard callout. Um, we'll, I'll show you a picture of it in a, in a little bit. But this basically got a lot of people and moved the needle significantly in towards getting people to update to versions over 5.6 from from 5.2. Um, just putting a dashboard notification in. Uh, it, it 
registered intent. And so that every time everybody went to the home screen of their dashboard, they would see this if they had it. If you came up with an acceptable solution, it would query the, uh, the sort of happy API, I think is what it's called, uh, and it would go away. The other thing that got installed in a 5.1 was something I had was already helped with the patch on. It was already in the, um, it was ready for 5.0, but kind of didn't get put in because of the focus change, was uh, protection from installing uh, plugins with uh, incompatibility uh, requirements. Now, there's two basic incompatibility requirements, either incompatible with WordPress itself, core, or incompatibility with PHP. And plugins, plugin authors and developers register these compatibilities in their README file. They're the ones that determine what the minimum versions are, what, they're, what they've been tested to, so what the, what the requirements are, and, and where they want to set their plugin. It used to be that if you had a WordPress incompatibility, it really just didn't show it to you. Uh, the, it didn't show the, uh, I don't believe it showed you the, uh, the plugin if you went to the install page. Uh, this is actually prevents you, you know, thereby preventing you from, from installing. This actually takes a step further and keeps you from having to, um, keeps you from having the ability to install a plugin that potentially could break your site and give you a white screen. Part of 5.2, which is coming out next week, uh, May 7th. Happy birthday to my wife, Rachel Cherry, and Roy. Hi, Roy. Uh, because it happens all on her birthday. It was supposed to come out on the 29th. It got pushed back a week. Um, what comes in that release is protection from updating plugins. So not just stalling, but updating. They're having compatibility requirements and the inability to activate and protection from activating plugins that have those requirements. You get those three things in place and plugins shouldn't hurt you anymore. Uh, so anybody who's, who's tried to install a plugin that instantly activated or installed and activated and white screen their site, it just shouldn't happen. However, if you already have a plugin installed or something that does white screen your, uh, your site, the biggest change that they put in are you really kidding me? It's on mute, I promise. Um, was the, what they call the white screen of death protection, uh, or the recovery mode. This was originally put into 5.1. It was uh, late in the cycle. There was a comment about its potential insecurity uh, with how it was implemented, and it was pulled out. And because it was pulled out, all these other things didn't, didn't go into 5.1. And it was good. It was, it was one of the things about even writing and putting a patch in such a complex piece of code was getting eyes on it and finding out from a broader audience what the potential implications are. Because as we all sit there and do things in front of our computer or in our own little silo, you can get a little tunnel vision about the broader implications and effects of things. And I, I will tell you that of all these things, I wrote code for most of the, for all, all of them except the last one. <laughs> and the last one, I could look at the code, and most of it was written by Timothy Jacobs and Alan Schislera, and it was beautiful code, but I couldn't really follow it, and I was having a difficult time figuring out how exactly, because it was just that deep into the internals of things. Um, and we'll go into what it does and how it does it a little later on, but it's now in trunk, it's ready to drop, and it's one of the, it will be one of the best things going forward to help users with their, help administrators with their sites. Not, not necessarily users, but administrators, because it's all about having the administrators be able to get into the site again. So this is what the dashboard callout looks like if you haven't seen it. Uh, that went up in the 5.1. There's a, a notification uh, up in the dashboard that shows up. It says, 
update your PHP. Give this a little, little blurb why and a little button to link into and to why, uh, to why in. Um, the link would take you to the update uh, PHP uh, page uh, that's on uh, the make.wordpress.core, um, uh, make.wordpress.org site uh, with other reasons and, and other information regarding it. Uh, we did add a couple filters to that so that it would provide hosts a way to use their data. So if you're hosting, if you're hosting on SiteGround or GoDaddy or Bluehost or any one of the other hosts, and they have a specific reasons for why you should update PHP uh, version, they can use a filter and hook into that, and the button will take you to their page. Now, this will automatically, if the filter's in use, also give that little text blurb at the bottom that uh, gives you the original page. And another filter in that area will, if there's a page to directly, um, the web host has that, here's where you update your PHP from, they can put a link in there and just pop you straight from your dashboard to their, um, their page to update your PHP. When I said we directly talk about what uh, the, the plugin uh, developers directly talk about and set their incompatibility requirements, this is an example of a plugin header uh, in, the read, uh, in a README. There's contributors, tags, the, um, the requires PHPs, uh, the, or the, the requires at least is their, their header for which version of WordPress is required. The new tag uh, is the requires PHP tag, and that's for the plugin developer to set what their minimum requirements are for the plugin. And the reason being is if you're running a, a, a smaller version of PHP, the plugin, the main file of the plugin, is automatically read and parsed. And so if you have things that, if, you, if it's namespaced, if you have short array syntax, if you have null coalescing variables for, that are in PHP 7, if you have things like that in your main file, it will fatal as it tries to load the file. Not even run the file, but just parse the file. You'll get a PHP parse error that's a fatal. Um, and so when, the, when in the plugin um, in repository or directory, they try to say fail gracefully, this helps people fail gracefully because at some point we just stop them from doing it. So really at this point it's just an additional tag, in, a header tag in the, uh, in the readme of a, of a plugin. They have also required that additional readme uh, or additional tag in readmes for themes. Uh, in fact, I think recently they've required all new themes submitted to the repository to have readme files because they didn't used to have them, and my guess is a significant percentage of them still don't have them. So the first one was preventing plugin installation. You may see where it says untested with your version of WordPress. Normally, it'll, it'll say with your version of, is compatible, or it'll be, say, incom or it may say incompatible. And if it says incompatible, it won't let you install. And if it says compatible, it will. If it says untested, it will. Because usually, this it says untested because I'm working in Trunk. And Trunk has a higher version number than obviously everything else does or what they're setting it for. So what we do is if the plugins are incompatible, it gives you the header up there that's in red that says, your plugin is incompatible. Here's where you can go to learn more about updating PHP. And in the same way that if your host has provided an extra link and header to that, that link will change to what your host provided, and that other piece of text will also follow um, below. You'll notice that if you, you you'll notice, especially in, in the, the second one, the WPS uh, hide login, that the button is grayed out, and it says cannot install. 
So it prevents, you can see it still in the, um, in the search pane. And this all comes from the, the plugin search, uh, search results field. Uh, it is the most common place people look for plugins, I've been told. So you can see it, you can't install it. You'll notice that the other one says cannot update. I'll get to that in a little bit. Because that's already installed and that's why. If you click on the view details, if you click on the, the you see the more details link, if you click on the more details link, what you get is an iframe. The iframe there is, it has, the, has the, uh, the plugin details. It will also tell you what your compatibilities are as far as your PHP compatibility or your WordPress compatibility. Um, those are the two dialog boxes up there. There's a warning because it's on trunk and it doesn't show it. If, there was no P, if I wasn't on trunk and I was on the, the regular version of PHP, that one wouldn't, wouldn't show up. It just wouldn't display. It's not that it's incompatible. It's untested, and because it's untested, it, it just wouldn't show. The same thing would probably happen if there was no requires at least tag shown in the readme. You get better information here because now you know why. What version of this does, does this, what, of PHP does this require? In this case, it requires version PHP 7 or higher. And it's compatible to, uh, it requires at least WordPress version 4.1 or higher. Those all come parsed from the readme text, readme.txt file, which is why having that information in there is, is important uh, going forward. If you go to the, the, next, the next, so that was on plugin installation. The next feature we implemented was on plugin updates. So all those plugins you have already installed in your site that have updates, and if those updates have potential consequences. I know uh, Josh Pollack, who's here somewhere, had uh, put a call out in Caldera Forms that said, you know, coming, coming up on our soon, you, you, know, you will not be able to run Caldera Forms if you want on PHP, I think it was 5.4, uh, under 5.4. So you have to update. And things like this just help developers not have to do things like that. And the, what this, so what this does is it tells you there's an update available tells you what the version is, you will still be able to click and see the version details and the change log and things like that to see what you're missing out on. And instead of the update now link, where after shiny updates would update it in place, there's another link. There's a link that, that says, you know, here learn more about upgrading or uh, updating uh, PHP. And again, if your um, host has put in a link to to go to theirs, it would, it would show up there. Um, if you are on the core update page, uh, where you can update your plugins, your themes, or, or core, this is what happens. You, you see your update, you, you see your plugin under plugins. It has an update available, but it gives you the same message. It says, this update doesn't work with your current version of PHP, has a link to it. And there's no way to update it. There's no checkbox. There's no way to make it update from there. If you click on the version details, again, this is what the, the iframe pop-up shows. Uh, and you can, and you, you, you can get more information about what, incompatibil what your incompatibilities are, because that's the location where, where it will say what the required PHP version is. And again, you get the same uh, dialogue uh, notice warning and to tell you what's there. And you can look at the change log and see what you're missing out on. And again, if you look, the cannot update button is grayed out and inactive. The third part of uh, keeping people safe from plugins was plugin activation. The, if you try to activate a plugin, you will get a WP error and a WP uh, error screen. 
that will give you this message that says, error, current PHP version does not meet the minimum requirements for, in this case, WP Session Manager, which we saw the PHP version was 7.0. The, all you have to do is hit your back button, button and you're back to the same place. But your plugin won't, won't, won't activate, or the plugin won't activate. So third kind of method of protection. Wake up, John. The white street of death error. Who's gotten a white screen of death? So everybody knows what it is, right? There's some PHP fatal for whatever reason, right? And all of a sudden, you're looking at your website, web page, and it's just blank. There's nothing there. And unless you have WP debug set, you won't see any error message because the default does not display uh, errors in line. And that, that will be that. Now what you will see uh, through this uh, improvement is a message that says your site is experiencing technical difficulties. Please check your site admin's email inbox for instructions. So if you're just a right, if you're a user, your users are still going to see, they're going to see a page like this, and they're not going to be able to go any further. If you're the admin, you check your email inbox, and you're going to get an email. And this email that's generated essentially says, "Howdy, since WordPress 5.2, there is a built-in feature that detects when a plugin or theme has a fatal error." In this case, WordPress caught the error in one of your plugins. It gives you the plugin name. Serve happy testing. Okay, so it was my own. First of all, please visit your website and see if you can find any visible issues. Then contact your host for assistance investigating this issue further if you need to. If your site appears broken and you can't access your dashboard, here's a link. You click on this link you'll go to login page to enter recovery mode. The link is, once you go in to click the link and log in, that link is no longer valid. Once you, the link, if you don't log in, the link expires after a day. If the error still persists, let's say you don't get the error after a day, before a day, it just regenerates another link and another email. So. The idea was not to spam admin users' email boxes with an error message every hour or every four hours or less than every once a day. And it tells you that, that the, the site link will expire in a day. Once you log in to the site in the back end now, you're the administrator, you've got that email, you log into the back, you will be greeted by the dashboard with this. It says, you are in recovery mode. There may be an error with the theme or plugin. To exit the recovery mode, log out, or use a little button up top there, which says exit recovery mode. You can find out about your failed plugins by going to the plugin screen. So when we go to the plugin screen, this is what we see. We see our plugin, and we're given two options. We can deactivate the plugin. Or we can resume and see, we can fix what we think is fixed, you know, fixable in the plugin and hit resume and see if it loads up again and see if it works. It says it just failed to pause and is paused in the dashboard. So what happens is the plugins just pause, pause in the dashboard. Your users will still get a fatal on the front end of the site, still get a white screen on the front end of the site so that nothing is, is really fixed. If you deactivate this, and go back to your site. If you have another error or another fatal, it will show that. And it will kind of continually go down the line until you don't have any more. So if you have sequential errors in, your, in, in certain plugins or code, that they will show up as they are the precipitating cause. Is it perfect? 
No, not really. Um, the, one of the largest problems that, that we built into it is for those people that don't have or have not yet put those headers into their readme files. If you don't have that header, just like happens in, in every version of WordPress previously, the plugin gets activated, the plugin can get installed, uh, the plugin can get updated. Uh, you're basically on your own uh, for those errors as they happen. At some point, they're probably going to reverse that, which means that if you don't have those values described in your readmes, the plugin may not activate, may not install, and may not update. And of the 65,000 plugins or so that are in the directory, my guess is quite a number of them probably don't have that header and will really stop being able to get updates and stop being able to get installations. Um, is it a breaking change? Technically? I mean, if you can't install something that you used to be able to install, is that breaking? Yeah. Does it really break anything? No. I mean, all it is is a comment in their, uh, in their readme, in their text file, to make it work. Uh, have we done, you know, the, the next, what's, the ne what's next, right? Themes. I'm st we're still working through how, um, how the repository and how the pages show that data for themes. But my guess is we can figure it out by 5.3 or so. Uh, all those things will be in place for, for themes. Uh, so that any, any theme you want to activate or you want to install or you want to update is also going to have to have that requirement in its readme file. Now, it's more problematic for themes because I, I can't say from day one, but for as long as I can remember, plugins have required a readme file. Uh, that's where people go to get you know, the, the, the data on the thing of what does it do, what's the description, what's everything else. Themes, it's only recently uh, that they've required the readme file. So they're a little behind. They now do any, any new theme that comes in requires it. And so at some point, they're going to have the same issues and problems. Can we make it better? Well, we have a track ticket up for adding an extra header to the plugin. File. So in your main plugin, in your main plugin file, there are there are what, there are what are called single file plugins. They don't have directories. They don't have other folders. They don't have readmes. A lot of these are very personalized plugins that people put on their sites if they're developers, or they they put for their clients that do one specific thing, or one group of things, and they're not in the repository. And if they get updated, they either get updated in place or, or they get updated by the developer and thrown back up on the site. But since they don't have readmes, there's no way for this code at this time to identify that they have any incompatibilities. The, there's a patch involved that recognizes the addition of two headers to the plugin header file a requires WP header and a requires PHP header. And so that those are parsed, read in, and so that the same sorts of compatibility checks can be done for those types of files, often uh, those types of plugins. There are probably a number of premium plugins that don't have standard readme.txt files. They may, ha they, they may exist on GitHub somewhere and just have a readme.md file. Uh, so they can see it. Those types of plugins are all going to be affected if the, they're not going to be able to have compatibility checks tested against. Uh, so we're still, there's still discussion about that. And obviously, as I alluded to before, the last, you know, the last piece is if those headers or those files don't, don't exist either in the plugin or the readme if, if that other track ticket goes through, 
we allow it. It's a, it's a, passive, it's a passive allow. If you haven't done the work, just the, the same way everything happens currently, it, it's allowed to go through. Now, at some point, they, like I said, at some point they may not. And you're going to hear from, if you maintain sites, how many people maintain sites for clients? I guarantee you'll hear from them. Because all of a sudden, they won't be able to update plugins. The plugins that they have will stay, and they'll stay on because they're already active. But they won't be able to update things. They won't be able to activate things if they haven't been activated. They won't be able to install new things. It's, it will be loud. Now, the upshot is there's a lot more work to do, right? Because you could always probably just create the readme text file, put the compatibilities in for it, and you know, package it up and change it um, to allow for those things. This just makes it a little easier. As I said before, I'm sure you can't read it, but I'll read them off. Um, I was very intentional about trying to set aside time to go to the P core PHP Slack uh, meetings and participate and to write patches and code and comment on track tickets and help where I thought I could. Uh, this is not one individual or, or anyone's project. There's, there's a lot of people. Uh, that were involved in this and in, in getting this forward. Uh, some of the primary contributors um, of the, uh, the, the primary person that seems to have taken off and run with the core PHP is uh, Alan Schlesera. Uh, Elaine is a fantastic developer, um, not a core committer, at least not yet, but um, he has basically shepherded this whole project through. He and uh, Felix Arntz, who is a core committer, and uh, Sergey Burkhoff. Sergey is a machine. I'm not even sure he exists. I think he's a robot. It, it, it is truly amazing to, to me how quickly he will see a patch, appropriately tag it, put a, a milestone on it, and, and do sorts of things that just happen within minutes of the patch being even uploaded. And he's in Europe. And I'm here in California, and I can tell you, we're not even close on the same time zone. But it doesn't really, you know, and maybe it's just that I seem to be doing some of this stuff late at night, and so it's a little better for his time zone. Maybe. But lately, I've been seeing things that I put in, and they just get, they get, they get their, their little milestones and, and stuff from on the, on the track incredibly quickly. Um, Jonathan DeRosier, who just gave a talk about what makes a good core contributor, um, has uh, really been uh, instrumental in getting a lot of these uh, track tickets committed uh, and in doing that and just you know, basically helping to look at these tickets and, 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 and get things going. Uh, it's none of this, because none, none of this stuff gets in the core without a core committer, right? You have to have a core committer review your stuff and, and look at it. Uh, the other thing about <laughs> the other thing about Sergi, when he commits the tickets, I look at the commit and see what the code was that's actually committed. I'm like, I didn't quite write it that way in my patch. And you try to figure out what the differences are for why they do things. And sometimes you can see it, and sometimes I just don't know. Um, it all still functions very similarly. And sometimes you think, oh my god, that was just so clever. There was just so much less code to, to put in that way. Uh, you, I, I, I just quite haven't figured out how their minds think in some of these things. One of the patches I submitted for one of the things, I submitted a second patch because I saw how Sergey had fixed the patch the first time around. And I said, I think this is going to be more in Sergey's style. <laughs> So I updated that one, and that seemed to be the one that got committed without much change. Um, Alan Slicer up the top and Timothy Jacobs, who I, I alluded to earlier, wrote the vast majority of the white screen death uh, error protection, the recovery mode error protection uh, code. Um, obviously, two brilliant developers. The, um, I just can't say enough about them. 
uh, everybody else, uh, Darren uh, Ether, Joy Reynolds, Johnny Harris, Jenny Wong, and Pascal. Huh? Thanks. Um, we're instrumental in, in, in feedback. Uh, every once in a while, you, you know, every once in a while you get feedback from people and, and you're like, I don't quite understand what you're saying. I had one of those interactions with one of my, with one of my tickets. It involved the, uh, the plug-in activation prevention. And the fact is, is, I was wrong. I mean, I didn't do it correctly, and, and the way they had, the way I was, was recommended I, I look and do was right. I just wasn't quite understanding what they were telling me, because they weren't telling it to me in necessarily a language that I understood, until someone else jumped in and said, hey, it really does work, and here's kind of a code example for it. And it's like, oh my god, it does make it so much easier. The one thing I found about contributing to core is they, there's a lot of, they're very conscious about keeping compatibility and support going forward. There was, there's much more direct change of core files rather than adding filters, adding hooks to change something than in creating new functions to, as part of the patches. Now, I have to tell you, in, in this whole sort of happy thing, there were a lot of new functions that went into functions PHP. Um, we, you know, some of them we fought kind of hard for, and one of them that I, I fought kind of hard for was there's a general function for is WP version compatible and is PHP version compatible. They take a parameter. The parameter is just the version number. So if your requirement is that your plugins are on PHP version 7.1, and you want to fail gracefully for those people, you can just put is PHP version compatible paren and then 7.1. And if it is, load the code. If not compatible, return and exit out. Keeps people from failing their own sites, failing their own plugins, or causing issues potentially. I learned a lot about PHP and coding and stuff by doing my own projects. This is one of them. Um, a lot of the ideas behind the next, the last track ticket, and having those uh, plugged headers for testing compatibility came from my work on GitHub Updater. I've been supporting that, and that's how, what I've been doing as far as a compatibility test for updating uh, for years now. And, I just found it works pretty easy. It's just an extra comment, adding extra comments to code. Who am I? It's my last slide, Dave. It's okay. Um, I'm a developer of that last plugin. Uh, you can find me at any of those places. And yeah, my this isn't my day job. I, I'm I'm a trauma surgeon. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. In your opinion, what causes more incompatibility with PHP versions? The fact that a developer is stuck with using only core functionality in their plugin, or mostly stuck with using base PHP functions and the PHP version deprecated those functions or, or whatever? There have not. So there have only been very few PHP functions that have been deprecated. Like create function has been deprecated. but. Create function was, was basically put in place so that you could write an anonymous function. And you can write an anonymous function from PHP 5.3. And it's only been deprecated from 7. So a lot of those things aren't. It, it, there is nothing that stops a plugin developer, as you saw, from writing code that is, requires PHP 7.3. OK? It will work in core. It will work in PHP 7.3. And if you set those requirements, that's what your users have to use. Otherwise, your, your plugin will either exit gracefully, fail gracefully, or it won't be installable, updatable, or activatable. I don't think it's an issue with how Core's code is. Core's code, I mean, as far as making a plugin, I think the problem that a lot of developers from the outside looking at, at WordPress cores is that 
we have been very, we, they, we, the core committing group, has been very intentional about maintaining backwards compatibility. As such, they don't use short array syntaxes, which came in 5.4. They don't um, use array dereferencing, which came in 5.4. They don't use uh, namespacing, right, which came in 5.3. Do I think all of these things would help tremendously? Absolutely. But it's, you know, the core's primary philosophy is let's not break things. Any other? Thank you, Andy.